Hi, it's Jamie, and um, we have the holidays coming up, and so I thought I would show you a fun project, and that's these little votive holders. So here I've created like a serpentine chain type effect, um, and then I also have these round ones um, with different color glazes, and then I have an oval one. And so I'm going to show you how I do these. Um, these, this group is pretty much the same. You're, I'm just switching out the shape right here. Um, and these ones are a little bit different, uh, but super simple and fun. So I'll start with the fan. Um, and what I have here is a nylon cutter set. It's from Fat Daddy O's and I got it at Sur La Table. And it's the largest one that's in the box. And it's just the fan cutter. And then I also have from the same deal um, nylon cutters um, that are circular. And I have the metal ones too, but um, the metal ones are very sharp. And what's nice about these guys is that they're really deep on the inside. So I, I much prefer these, but if you have metal ones, those are fine too. So I'll just tell you the sizes I'm using and you can proceed with that. Uh, really, the only size you need to know is this inside one, because <laughs> everything else you could, you're just gonna look and see. Hey, does that look good or not? Is that size pleasable to me? So this is about two inches um, in diameter. So that's what you want to make your center. Now on the metal set, I noticed that there were two that were really close to each other, close to the two inch mark, and they both worked. So the only difference is here. This is with this cutter here. Um, and it's, you know, it fits in there nicely. It's, it's not too snug. Um, and this one was done with the metal cutter and it's a little bit bigger. So, but the other sides on the metal one is really, this fits in there really, um, snugly. So it's just, you know, it's just a matter of preference. All right. So let me get back to these guys. Um, the way that I do these, this type here is that I will decorate a piece of slab and this slab is 5 8 it started out as 5 8 of an inch thick and then I applied my decoration and then um, as you can see I've already made three over here and I'm going to show you how I do the fourth so the first thing I do is figure out where on here do I want to pick for my design and I think I'm going to do it at this point right here now I'm not going to press this in yet what I'm going to do is now take my center and center it in this piece here. Now I am going to cut this one, so what I want to do is lubricate the cutter so that it will easily come out. And I did that by spraying a little bit of WD-40 on a little sliver of um, sponge. So now I'm going to put this in here, center, and push. So now I have this nice hole in the middle of my slab. And then I'm going to take another slab that I've pre-rolled. And this is um, a quarter inch thick. And I'm using Sculpture Raku clay here. Now clays all have different shrinkages, so you, it's good to know what you're working with, especially when determining the centerpiece. You know, I've I've used um, just this with just stonewares. I haven't really done it on porcelain yet, so you may want to double check the size for that and the shrinkage rate. All right, so I I scored it and I put slip on it, and then now I'm just gonna put this on here, and I'm gonna go back and forth. A little bit. Now I didn't score and do slip on both sides. This is fresh clay. If these had been firmed up then I probably would have done it on both sides. Alright so that's on there firm. Lee. And I'm going to come back now. I'm going to center this on here. And I'm going to slice. So there you have it, my little um, 
votive holder. That's part of my circle set or serpentine set. So now I'm just going to go and inspect just around the edges to see that it doesn't have any separation. If it does, then I would pro then I would take additional measures to make sure that separation was um, okay. See, like right here, for example, I don't know that you can see that, but um, you can see that it's not it looks like it's going to come apart. So what I'm going to do to fix that is I'm going to do this thing called stitching and then I'm going to take a little bit of clay and I'm going to put it into the seam there. So I stitched it. I'm going to stuff clay in and then I'm going to clean it up with my little credit card. My retired credit card. Actually it's a Starbucks card. There. And now I don't see the seam anymore. I feel better about that finish. So you may have to touch that up on any of the sides where you see that there is separation. Um, I'm almost done here. The final thing that I'm going to do on these pieces is that I'm going to put a little hole in here for uh, allowing um, the air to get in during drying. Um, here it is really a thick spot right here. So this was 5 eighths and this is a quarter eighths. So I've almost got an inch worth and so I want to give it some breathing and so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the measurement of the needle tool and I see that it's that thick so then I'm going to just move my uh, finger up a little bit because I don't want it to go all the way through and then I'm going to find the center of that thick space and then I'm just going to puncture the corner and then when I dry it it's going to allow air to get in there and dry a little bit quicker one thing about drying these too that helps is if you have wear boards that you can put between them or put them between. So what I'm going to do here is I have just a, um, a little sheet rock board and then I'm going to take my pieces and I'm going to stick them on here. And then I'm going to put paper on top and bottom and then put the board on top. Now that's also going to allow uh, for when it to dry to have a little bit of pressure on it and to keep it from warping. So now I'm just going to set those aside for a few days until they get um, hard. The other type of um, the other type I want to show you are these guys right here. And these are really fun to do. Um, what I did is I took a circular cookie cutter and I just cut out discs. So I created the bottom and all it is is just um, I picked a size that was a little bit bigger than this hole, maybe one or two up. And then I picked one that was um, at least two or three up for this size. So I do the, I, you know, I cut out the circles and then I cut out the middle parts and then I do it off center. So all these are playing with the exception of this one. I did put a little bit of texture on here. So this will be the top piece. So the way that this works is this is what it looks like when it goes into fire. It looks like just a bunch of discs and rings. And then once you've done the firing, then it's time for glazing. And so these are my bottom pieces. So what I'll do is I'll put an iron oxide on here and then I'll take my rings and I'll dip this in one glaze and dip this in another glaze. And then I will use Elmer's glue to glue them onto the disc, the iron oxide disc. And all I do at this point is I line up the circles so that they're um, lined up on the inside. I'm just going to make sure that that's the case. And that they're evenly put onto the bottom disc. 
And once I have Elmer glued them on, then what I'll do is I'll take an ear syringe and I'll fill it with um, glaze and I'll get the inside. And usually like this one, the glaze color on the inside will be the same color as the bottom disc. And then as I fire this, the glaze melts or the glue melts away and then the glaze is what bonds the pieces together. So I found that um, this thickness I've used for this slab is 3 8 inch. So um, I was playing around with the size of the bottom, whether I wanted a, a 3 8 inch bottom or a quarter inch bottom. So I think I'm actually going to go with a quarter inch bottom so you don't see it. It's, you know, it's all just your personal aesthetic, you know, what you want to do. But um, anyway. So I find that using the 3 8 inch si uh, slab sizes are great for you know being on par with the um, the votive, the size of the votive. So I think if you go a little bit shorter, you're going to see the rims. This still has some shrinking to do. Um, another thing that I use these for, now these are a little bit thicker. This one is a half inch. And I would do the same thing with this one, have the same treatment. I would put iron oxide on the bottom and then do um, one glaze here and another glaze here and then, um, you know, fire it the same way. The thing is, um, when you have these little bit deeper ones, you could probably still use it for the candles, but I also like to use it as the base of a glass tubular vase uh, that I get at a local import store and I use it for my Lucky Bamboo. So I'll include a picture of that, but that's a, a fun idea as well. Um, you don't have to put in a uh, glaze at the bottom um, with the ear syringe as suggested, but so this is what it looks like when you don't do that. You just see the iron oxide of the bottom disc, and that's fine. So that's what that looks like. This is a chino glaze with a red glaze on top of it. Um, I discovered later on that chino glazes weren't the best ones to adhere. <laughs> so uh, for th this in this example, this is called Matt's Flambe and this is a chino. And so what I did, knowing that the chinos are a little bit flaky as far as adhesion goes, I used the Matt's Flambe on the bottom to help with the adhesion of the um, to the di the bottom disc for the chino disc. And, and it's fine. It's perfectly fine. So this size I made a little bit bigger and this is for uh, you know the wider base candles or for uh, ball candles. They're fun. Um, you could get away with doing a different kind of uh, glaze on this bottom layer too if you like, but uh, you'll have to use a stilt in the kiln. And I've used stilts before. These guys are all done on stilts so they're glazed top and bottom. And um, I've used them in cone 10 and that's been fine. So that's it for the, the votive project. Um, hope you try it. It's a lot of fun. And I'll catch you next time. Thanks.